Hey guys, Jeff here. Today, let's do a photo shoot breakdown. Hey guys, Jeff McLean here, staff instructor at Rocky Mountain School of Photography. We're out here on the Alberton Gorge, down here on the Clark Fork River. I'm here with my good friend, Eric Nielsen, whitewater kayaker, and we're doing a portrait session out here, waiting for sunset to show up so we can maybe get a little more color in the sky. I'm going to be shooting some tungsten film. I'm going to be shooting some digital, uh, kind of a mix of different things. It's going to be fun. Let's check it out. All right, so that's what's happening. We're down on the rocks along a river just outside of Missoula here, and we had to get some special permission to get down there, uh, private property and all that. But the original concept was I wanted to photograph my friend Eric, who's a whitewater kayaker, and I wanted to try out a tungsten film that Cinestill makes. I thought it would be kind of cool to shoot some film. But while I'm there, I'm gonna shoot some digital as well. I actually had two different film cameras, and I also had some regular portrait film that I thought I'd fire off as well, just to kind of have that, you know, just something different happening. So we can see here in this video, we're looking down on the river, and if we stop here, this is the crew that I brought down. Basically from left to right, we've got uh, Mike, who is our social media manager currently, and he was actually acting as my photo assistant, handing cameras back and forth for me, as well as getting some behind the scenes. Hiding behind him is one of our current students, and he's got a video camera that he's using, and he was one of the ones who filmed this video that I was able to cut together. You can see I'm standing on the rocks there. It's a little hard to tell, but I'm standing on this precipice where there's basically a death gap right in front of me. You know, if I were to fall in there, aside from broken bones, I would be dumping right into this river, which is just rushing by and it's very cold. So a lot of our attention was on making sure that nobody fell into the river in this spot. It's a very steep incline to get down to this area. You can see there we have uh, my assistant, Josh, who is a graduate from the professional intensive program, and he's holding a soft box there with my strobe light and a grid on it. And it's attached to a boom pole so that he can, he can raise it up high enough in the sky to get Rembrandt lighting on my model. We also have there in the orange, we have Anastasia, who is also a graduate of the RMSP professional intensive program. And she currently has a light meter in her hand and is using a color checker card that was really instrumental for me to be able to kind of dial in the proper color with my film shots. Also helpful for the digital file should I need it. And then we have Eric the model who had just paddled down river to meet us here. And he's getting ready to uh, be photographed in this scene. So I had to load up our gear and hike down there and you can see you know, I'm loading up a film camera here. This is the Fuji GW693. Um, very sharp lens. I like using it a lot, medium format, loading up some 120 film. Getting some pocket wizards ready on the cameras to fire my strobe unit. And then I thought it'd be fun to bring one of our other current students, Max, along. He's a licensed drone operator. Thought it'd be fun to have him come along and just get some footage, uh, some aerial footage for this scene, just because it's such a dramatic location. So I'm loading up some film into this camera, which is a Fuji GX683. Um, kind of a, definitely an older system. Both of these cam film cameras I'm using are older systems, but they both have very sharp lenses. And this one's unique in that every lens you put on it gives movement. So you have swing, tilt, and shift with every lens that you put on this camera. Um, and it takes nine frames per roll. It's a beast of a camera. It's, otherwise, people call it the Fujizilla. And, uh, but it's enjoyable to use, really nice smooth focusing and, um, you know, can be used for architecture or product, or in my case, you know, some creative portraits. So the Cinestill 800 tungsten film, this is my first time using it. I thought it was pretty interesting looking film, almost has this quality to it. Uh, like it's a, a black and white photo from, you know, the World War II era that's been hand colored. That's what it reminded me of when the colors kind of came up in Photoshop. I was like, wow, it's, it's got some of, you know, I expected a lot more blue out of it being a tungsten film. Um, but instead it's like this really muted blue, which is pretty cool and unique. So I also shot a bunch of digital shots, of course. And I was using the Sunseeker app just to kind of get an idea as to where my sun was gonna be. I knew I needed to shoot during dusk. And because of this, I'd, I'd been out there already to scout the location, kind of different times in the spring. And I knew that I would be up in the ISO 800 area being out here. Since I had ISO 800 pegged, I knew I couldn't, you know, since I was shooting film, 
Um, I wanted to kind of keep that as what I call a constant. I have these, this one thing that's gonna be varying on me and that's the ambient light. When we first got down there, my shutter speed was at about 2 50th of a second. It was you know, still pretty bright, sun was still up in the sky. We were waiting for the sun to dip behind the mountain, get more into dusk. I wanted more of that natural blue of dusk, the 8,000 to 10,000 Kelvin sort of temperature to react and kind of mix with the fact that I'm using tungsten film so that things could go even bluer. That was my initial concept with the color. Um, knowing that Eric has a green boat, I knew I would be changing the color of his boat in post anyhow, no big deal. Um, but I was instructing Anastasia basically based upon ISO 800 and knowing that I wanted to shoot most of these shots at f5.6, I was basically just kind of keeping track of the shutter speed because that's the thing with the ambient light that's gonna keep dipping as the sun goes down and getting darker and darker. I didn't want to get into the territory of being at a 15th of a second. Slowest I wanted to be, I was 30th. And even then I really wanted to shoot more like at a 60th. I wanted my strobe to be a little bit more powerful than the ambient light overall. So again, metering the strobe in this situation, metering it up to f5.6. That way, once that's set, it's also a constant. If I start playing with my ISO, then I have to instruct my assistant to then make that same calculation, either stop down or stop up with the strobe, and it can very quickly I can start to get lost about where everything's at and keep sending Anastasia up the rock to get flash meter readings. Instead, I'm deciding to peg my ISO 800 down, knowing that that's the film speed I'm using, and I'm just gonna shoot on that with my digital camera too, no problem. And from there, I'm really just getting shutter speed readings along the way. And then when it came time to shoot, from there, it was just a matter of instructing Eric into different positions. You can see he's also on this precipice, kind of over this death gap that I call it. And he didn't have a lot of room to move. But the coolest part was, is uh, the first final shot that I show you here was the shot that I imagined. It was the one that I had in my mind. I said, you know, what, what am I looking to do? I visualized this photograph and this is the tungsten 800 Cinestill film. I, because I'm shooting with the tungsten film, I knew all of my ambient light was gonna go very blue like this, and even more so on, on using, using a tungsten film, even more so going into dusk. And that's what I wanted. I wanted this play between changing his boat to this orange against that blue and the fact that he's wearing a blue dry suit. What I didn't know is exactly what this film was gonna look like, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. And, and using the Fuji 680, I was able to put a little swing and tilt in there so that it's really just his face and some of his boat that's sharp and you can see the focus falls off. Certainly this sort of thing could be emulated with a tilt shift lens on 35 millimeter cameras, no problem. Um, I even sat down to try to see if I could emulate this look using Capture One Pro um, and Photoshop, and I just couldn't get it to look just like this. You know, there's a number of techniques you can use in post to create that tilt swing sort of effect. Just didn't have the same look and I couldn't get the colors to look quite like this. What was interesting to me is that at that time of, time of night, even darker and darker, because we're down in this like gorge, it's real dark down there compared to the brightness of the sky out there looking towards sunset area. But even then on the film, there's tone in that area. Whereas on the digital file, that area was just 255 across the board, totally blown out. Um, I couldn't even really bring much back with a highlight slider. It was just gone. It was many stops brighter than our, our ambient light in that gorge, which I knew when I went into it, that, that was gonna be the case. And I was just gonna be letting the sky go. You know, there's only so much I can do about that unless I have an ND filter that's in that shape that I put in front of the lens and things start to get kind of awkward at that point. You can see here, this is the digital capture. Um, again, setting my camera at 3200 Kelvin and I've got a full orange gel on my strobe, which is converting it back to closer to daylight with a little bit of warmth in there. And uh, I liked how this came out as well. It doesn't have that swingy look but um, I thought it was pretty cool. And then we've got the Portra 800 film, which is a, a different look altogether. In this case, since I was going into a daylight film, I had to remove the gel at the end of the shoot off of that strobe so that it wasn't overpowering it with orange light. Have my assistant drop it by about a stop. Um, gave me another meter, meter reading, made some adjustments back to f5.6 and we were good to roll. And again, you can see some tone in the background there in the sky, which I thought was kind of interesting. So you can see even working with strobe light that 
time of day is important because if there's too much ambient light, then you need to either get some ND on your lens or you need to be working with high speed sync strobes. Or if you're working with a camera that has leaf shutter, then you can do it that way. The GX680 uh, can shoot up to 400th of a second, but even still, I knew that I could accomplish this just by waiting till dusk, and I really wanted that quality of light anyhow. So if you liked this video, hit that thumb sign. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked. If you liked the Tungsten 800 film, the digital file, or the Portrait 800 film of these looks. If you want to see more of this content, feel free to subscribe up there, down there, and hit the little bell to get notified. This is a lot of the stuff that I teach here at Rocky Mountain School of Photography in the Professional Intensive Program. Studio strobe lighting, lighting on location, Capture One Pro, Photoshop, video and audio capture and editing. So please check us out at rmsp.com. Thanks for watching.